future calls. From between the whispering pages of countless volumes, adventure urges you to make a choice. Escape a dungeon dark, dive into an ocean deep, or discover a planet unknown. There is only one rule. Always choose your own adventure, bros! The Choose Your Own Adventure Bros is recorded live on the Fulcrum Entertainment Channel, where the audience chooses the story. This week, we are reading... Starship Traveler. Gilbert is in the chat, and he knows what's up, saying, Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Fulcrum. Indeed, we're getting Trek up in here. Mm-hmm. Hello, Jackson, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm I'm excited for this. I mean, you know, I'm all about uh, fantasy and everything, but i got to say, this is my jam right here. Oh, yeah, you, you are the person who I think has introduced me to Trek the most. Yeah, right. I, I and I I didn't really appreciate it for a very long time. Um, yeah, like if you go into it expecting Star Wars, then you know it's it's one of those things. They're, they're like apples and oranges, even though they're both kind of like sci-fi. You know, <laughs> I think as well. Like um, at the time that I would have been watching that, there were also other sci-fi things that were more childish. That I think were yeah. really sort of more appealing to me. It's like a, a Space Precincts ninety nine. Uh, yeah, or 2099 or whatever it is, Space Precinct, uh, the Jerry Anderson show. Yeah. The thing about that was, th- I always thought that was more of a cop show with just like a kind of sci fi twist, you know? Like, yeah, it, it was. And uh, this is the thing I think it was just, it meant that the stories were way simpler, just like basically baddies, goodies, chase after people. Whereas um, Next Gen and Star Trek often had actual nuance and stories to tell. Yeah, there was, there was, you know, um, moral quandaries that needed to be considered you know and things you know and it was never black and white and it was back the show, in the days where you could have a a 40 minute episode and the thrust of the story is are oh, the engines aren't working <laughs> we, we we really need to fix them we can't figure out what's wrong whole episode no one gets set on fire no one gets thrown through a window no one gets punched and you know like it's oh it's, <laughs> Hey, no, normally there is at least some form of sci-fi interestingness to go along with it. It's like the engines yeah, aren't yeah, working, be like, and know, because like, they're not working, there's now two Geordies. There's something eating the starboard nay shells, and we can't tell what it is. You know, <laughs> the sensors <laughs> aren't picking up anything. Like, oh, what is it? Oh, it's mold. It's space mold. <laughs> Captain, I sense it only wants to live. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Counselor. <laughs> Counselor Troy, shut the fuck up. Also, Councillor, what are you doing on the bridge? <laughs> <laughs> I need to say hello to the people who are in the chat. So, uh, Patrick, yeah. to boldly go where no bros have gone before. Split infinitive. <laughs> I'll split your infinitive. No, I'm sorry, split infinitive. <laughs> Skylar saying hello, everyone. Hello, Skylar. And Hans. Hello, Hans. How are you? Yeah, Hans. John Bubba, morning, y'all. Finally, I can catch off from the beginning. Yes, excellent. Nice. And Nate is here. Greetings, Nate. Greetings. Oh, I've only just noticed that, that profile picture is like a Legend of Zelda thing. That's cool. I believe oh, it is yeah. a Link and Zelda in silhouette, silhouette, or at least that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, it looks like the um, the Zelda looks like the Smash Trophy. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. We are going into this new book, Space Traveller, or Starship Traveller. So, unfortunately, we did not conquer the Forest of Doom, but before, no. We, no. before we get weary of it, uh, we'll move on to other books. We have quite a good collection, including a horror-based one Ooh. that I'm looking forward to, but we might save that for October. <laughs> really? It's a long way off. <laughs> well, mate, we've got we've got other books, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it We did four weeks on the Forest of Doom, and we didn't finish it. Yep. So these books could take us a long time. I, I was saying to Harry just before we started, I, I got lucky at one of the uh, the thrift stores, and uh, I found Tunnels and Trolls, <laughs> legally distinct <laughs> from uh, 
from a certain role play game that you might know. <laughs> <laughs> Tunnels and trolls. Mm. I also love the the very made up fantasy names they've got. Yeah, There's two stories you said. Yeah, the amulet of the Salkti and the arena of Kazan. Yeah, and th- that that painting, like the cover art's kind of badass. Yeah, it's real kind of like um, oh, what's the name of that artist? Uh, um, I don't know. Oh, uh, oh, Frank Vazetta. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Vizetta, yeah. 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 With his, all his Conan art with yeah, ridiculous yeah, yeah. Arnie-sized men and ridiculous uh, Pamela Anderson-shaped women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then, let's get into our sci-fi adventure. So um, I'm really excited for this, and part of it is I want you guys to start thinking because we get to name a lot of people. We get to name multiple characters in this. Um, and since it's our first time round, I think we should indulge ourselves and, and do that. So think of yeah. some fun names for characters, particularly science officers, uh, engineers, a medical officer, a security officer, and two security guards. I, I think we should just do the, the fantasy Star Trek team, you know? And uh... <laughs> Yes, I really I really like your concept of that. Yeah, the, the dream Star Trek crew. Yeah, um, I mean, from where I'm standing, it's going to be mostly next gen, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, I'm... Um, I'm telling you this now. If if we don't agree to uh, having um, Chief O'Brien on board, I will be upset. Yeah, yeah, we can we can have Chief O'Brien. I'm I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Gilbert's coming with Zap Brannigan. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Such an incredible choice, and yet somehow erratic. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's jump into this game and see where it takes us. Uh, we get one of these things, uh, choose a mode. Yeah. We're going to go with classic. So here is our story. Oh, oh, you I will to... have to uh, yeah change yeah. <laughs> our banner up here. Okay. Hopefully that can show us enough of it for us. So, having served as a dedicated officer of the Astro Navy for many years, your experience and skill has been rewarded with your promotion to captain. You wear your new uniform with pride as you enter your name on the registration console. Who are we? Which captain are we? Guys, get your votes into the comments. I want to see some suggestions. We've got two votes for Zap Brannigan, and I'm upset. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Captain Keiko O'Brien. You (laughs) shut your fucking mouth. (laughs) But Keiko, you can't take the captain's job, Keiko. Oh, uh, Malcolm Reynolds, no. <laughs> Malcolm Reynolds? <laughs> Who's Malcolm Reynolds? Fucking Firefly. <laughs> Nate. <laughs> Nate, I expected better of you. I, I'm going to make myself really unpopular now and say I hated Firefly. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I think I've done it on the on the podcast a few times. So I've, I've, I, I, don't, I don't hate it. I just don't quite understand the love for it. Quark. <laughs> I mean, I'm voting for Picard. You know I am. <laughs> Literally, guys, the only thing that's had two votes so far is Zap Brannigan. Obviously, like I'm aware you're you're just jumping in names, so um, <laughs> let's, let's let's try and maybe not do Brannigan. <laughs> Something Wong. <laughs> Got it. Yes, Captain Something Wong. Yes, <laughs> Mike Lee Roy. Mike Leroy. Mike Leroy. I don't get that one. <laughs> that could yeah. just, maybe it's not a joke. Maybe it's just it's just a name. <laughs> Stop the count. Oh, God. No. no. I mean, we're not having this. <laughs> I mean, Scott is kind of right in a way. <laughs> I mean, like, we, have, <laughs> we sat here for like an hour and a half. We're like, All right. Oh, okay. Well, it's... Oh, hang on. Didn't even type. Brannigan. All right. Yeah. Done. Do we actually like? Hmm, okay, and you are properly to select your gender. Oh, uh, what gender is is that, Brannigan? I, I guess male. Why? Yeah, <laughs> an approximation of male. Yeah, I'm. I have no interest in talking about that any further. <laughs> <laughs> so the console will determine your base stamina, skill, and luck values. You place your palm flat on the registration console to complete the process, calculating your stamina. And here are our rolls. Guys, we'll just look. Okay, a roll of a six. So our stamina is 18. Not the best we could have gotten. No, that's 
pretty bad. <laughs> but I think we're going to get some red shirts to put in the way of us and the enemy, so maybe that'll help. Yeah. Calculating our skill. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's a pretty good skill score. And now, our luck. <laughs> okay, luck is not our strong suit today. No. And um, I don't know if we're going to get a uh, Yaztromo, like, potion or something like we did before. So, with the process complete, you remove your palm from the console. You adjust your uniform with pride and holster your standard issue phaser. Head to the Admiral's quarters for briefing. You arrive at, at the Admiral's quarters to receive your mission briefing. Admiral Jackson, your superior, enters and you salute. He explains your mission, your main goal being to seek out new planets and explore uncharted sectors of the galaxy. As the Astro Navy's newest captain, you are to be assigned a starship. Admiral Jackson directs to choose from the following. Take the Starship Traveller or choose your own starship. So I think this allows us to name our starship. Okay. So guys, first let's do, um, everyone gets like one name. Like you can put a name into the chat and then we'll maybe do some votes on those names. Do you want to try that? Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's choose our own starship and see what we do. You decide to take your own ship, which you christen the Starship What? So I had an immediate thought. So did I. So, Jackson, what, what was yours? The righteous indignation. Hell yes, my boy. <laughs> is that two votes for that? That is two votes for the righteous indignation. See yes. if you can beat it, guys. That's what you're aiming to beat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, this might be a popular choice. Bebop, says Ned Yeah, I, I could see that being popular. <laughs> John has gone with Thunder Chicken. I um, mean... The implication from Skylar Honnett. Um, Lollipop. It's a good ship. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> you and Patrick. Like you wouldn't have said that. Like if I hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> the implication too. So there's two votes for the implication. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of always sunny fans in the chat. I think. Is that always oh, that what it is? Yeah, have you seen that? It's an episode of Always Sunny where they're, they're talking about like um, the Heart of Gold. Heart of Gold. Why do I know the Heart of Gold? Um, is that the Hitchhiker's Guide? Yes, yeah, the ship with the infinite improbability drive. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, cool, good, right. I haven't actually seen the movie, I've only read the books, but the USS Lovecraft. I like that as a name, actually. That's, That's quite good. good. One, yeah. yeah, interesting, yeah, interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> I, right. This... I think ties go to us, to be honest. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, I said we put names in and then we'll vote. So, do, do we want to try doing that? So, if anyone likes, so if guys, now we vote. So, like, if you saw another name that you think is better than the one that you put in, let me know. And then we'll see if uh, we get one of them winning over. All right. If you want to swap your vote from yours to someone else's. But we, you know, I don't know. But yeah, um, the, the the episode it's it, it's where they go, they buy a boat, and oh. Dennis has this whole thing of like, well, yeah, but they'll come on board, but then you know they won't say no because of you know, yeah. you know what are they going to do? They can't say no <laughs> because of the implication. Like, but well, we're not doing anything, right? Yeah, we're not doing anything. Of course, we're not doing anything. <laughs> but there's the implication. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's, it's just so awful. Uh, that, that, that's it. That, that, that's the whole thing of the show, isn't it? It's, it's like you watch monsters in a little glass bottle. Yeah, like, oh. and they're fun when. <laughs> it's I I see it as like a weird evolution of bottom. Yeah, like, bottom is a similar idea. Of th they're utterly horrendous people, but you yeah. just watch them because they're they're very entertaining. Bottom at least had that like. They kind of they, they always fail and they never like really affect anyone else, you know. Like it's they, they're kind of like victims of themselves, you know. But but always sunny. It's just like oh god. <laughs> always sunny. Leave a lot of victims in their wake. Yeah, um, it's, it's like a, a deconstruction of a sitcom, you know. It's like <laughs> all right. I'm I'm very happy to see that Patrick has pushed us over the line. We're going with the righteous indignation. Yes. Oh yes. Um, Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> but um, I like this uh, Falkham said personally I like the Heart of Gold more that is a good one it's possible we'll have to do 
multiple goes round, like we did with uh, Forest of Doom. If we do, I think we can go through all those names. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> so we do all the names, all of them. <laughs> Hope we're allowed like this many characters. And oh, <laughs> Dang oh fuck it. off! <laughs> Come on, remove the space. <laughs> Righteous in. Righteous indignation. All yes. right. Okay. To complete the inspection, you perform a diagnostics check on your ship, calculating weapon strength. Oof, okay. Okay. We're Pretty not too good. bad on weapon strength with a score of 11. Pretty calculating good. our shields. Yes. Maximum shields. Maximum shit good. <laughs> with the diagnostics check complete, you and the Admiral are satisfied that your starship is in perfect working order. Follow Admiral Jackson to assemble your crew. So here we are. Two choices. Do we want to take the Admiral's uh, recommendation or do we pick out our crew? Let's handpick our crew. Yep. Although the process of this is not, not at all like handpicking because we randomly pick their stats. Yeah. Like with dice rolls. It's more like you just sort of just give them, yeah, these guys, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Rickety Cricket would be good. <laughs> what well, is a name for the ship? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be quite nice. Oh, yeah, Gilbert suggested that. <laughs> This oh, is a rigged witch hunt, Skylar. Witch hunt, no. Rigged, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, science officer. Who's got a good name for a science officer? Bark. Since Spock. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, Spock. Obviously Spock. <laughs> yeah. Who agrees? If you agree, put in Spock, or uh, if you've got a different name, shout out at me. I suppose, yeah, science officer. Like, I mean, who is a who is a good science officer that I like? Spock? <laughs> other than the, Spock. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of who the science officers were on other ships, but like, I, I know the medical officers, but often not. They often do, double up, to be fair. Tu tu Tuvac? He was a science officer, wasn't he? No, he was head of security, Tuvac, I think. Was he? Yeah. Yeah, he, he was in a gold uniform. <laughs> we talked about the same character on, on, on Voyager. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the the Klingon, not Klingon. Um, Rob, Vulcan. um, Vulcan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Um, I was, in fact, part of the rebel, whatever they were called. Yeah, the guys from Deep Space Nine. But oh, now you... I am here. Data. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking, but is Data a science? Because he's he's a gold uniform again, isn't he? Isn't he engineering or something? Yeah, he is engineering. I thought he was engineering, but they kind of they kind of use Data for everything because he's Data, you know. <laughs> Oh, interesting. We've been talking about Tuvok, and Nate has said Tuvok. Wesley I just, Crusher. I just go with Wesley Crusher. <laughs> There's a Wesley Crusher character. Actually, there, there is an Ensign. I forgot about the Ensign, so we can have Wesley if we want. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, I, I think we'll, we'll go with Spock. Because we've had some good suggestions, but but I don't think they haven't. They, they've beaten Spock. So, uh, first officer... Gender, it's Spock, so we'll go with male. So we're exploring new terrain. They can offer, oh, sorry, skilled in advanced technology, chemistry, and many forms of language. They are an invaluable member of your team. When exploring new terrain, they can offer crucial advice and prove to be a useful sounding board to your own ideas. Welcoming them to your crew, you ask them to place their palm on the scanner to calculate their stamina. Ooh, pretty good. Okay, stamina 20 from Spock. That's that Vulcan biology for you. Hmm. And his science skill, nice, pretty good. Cool. All right, cool. okay, Spock. <laughs> so, medical officer, right? Medical officer, guys. What are you thinking, Jackson? Well, fucking not Beverly Crusher. <laughs> not Beverly Crusher. I'm Beverly. interested. Okay, why not Beverly Crusher? She sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, well, I would put in Doctor Bashir because yeah. I'm, I'm a DS9 nerd. Yeah. Um, but you know, like we can go with that. Uh, what let's see what of, else. What are the names people have? What was the name of the the um, hologram one? I can't remember his name. The hologram. Oh, I think he was just Doctor, wasn't he? Was he? I'm not sure he ever got a name. Yeah, from Voyager. Yeah, Doctor. The the bald one from Gremlins too. Yeah, yeah. The one who made out with the lady Gremlin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, interesting. Okay, so Dr. Killian Patient or Dr. Willie Make It? 
is John's idea, which I, which I kind of like. Uh, Gilbs is not happy with your opinion about, <laughs> about that. I'm kind of into this. How about just the doctor? John Bubba said, um, just Doc. And we have had a request for Doctor Who earlier on from Hans. So I'm thinking, yeah, maybe we just go with the Doctor. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Um, and I'm going to put, right, I'm going to put the gender as female, right? Because I believe that's the current. Is it the current Doctor? It was the, it was the last one I heard. It's about and, to change, I think. And let's not have this whole ship a sausage fest. So let's like put one in for us already. Um, your medical officer is well versed in biology, physiology, and medical treatment. Their knowledge is diverse enough that it can be applied to interstellar life vital for exploring uncharted territory. Due to their medical knowledge, your medical officer can restore two stamina to each crew member whenever they return from a planet. Welcoming them to the crew, you ask them to place their palm on the scanner, calculating their stamina. Ooh, the doc is not good on the stamina. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that uh, makes sense. You never send your doc into like harmful situations, there. Yes. Yeah. That's like, oof. <laughs> oof. <laughs> Maybe we should have called the Doctor Crusher. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Um. Well. Well. Um. Sure. Fine. <laughs> Glad to have you on board, Doc. <laughs> yeah. Right. Next, we'll choose our engineering officer. Jordi LaForge. Jordi LaForge. Okay, Jordi LaForge, yeah. Yeah, am I gonna am I gonna fight that? We haven't had any next gen characters yet, have we? We've, um, had, we've, had, we've had Spock. Yeah. Yeah, um Jordi Jordi was always my favourite when I was a kid. Because I thought his visor was cool. His visor was cool. Yeah, what I was the episode wanted... where like the Romulans hacked his visor. Oh um, yeah, and they could they could like control him, couldn't they? And they tried to make him assassinate Picard, I think maybe. Yeah, there, there was something along those lines. I I barely remember the episode now. Uh, okay, keep the healer in the back away from the front line, says John Bubba. Patrick just says S. Well, as, as our engineering officer, just S. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and Hans feels like says, "Good news, everybody." But I'm like, uh, what, "What good news? Who's John the Bubbles. Klingon engineer from Voyager? Oh, I can't remember her name." Oh uh, yeah, I know what you mean, but I can't think of her name either. Um... <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh. Scotty over Geordie and Skylar wants Skylar. <laughs> yeah. Um, Blana Torres. Oh, oh, that's um, the Torres. The oh. Hmm. Hmm. I'm interested. I'm vaguely interested in that. I'm also kind of interested in putting Skylar in as well. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not sure we've had anything that's sort of gone voted over one over the other. Um, but yeah, th th that is quite a funny idea, and I quite like it. Yeah. Patrick saying the SS Georgie for the ship name. <laughs> We're <laughs> so way past fun. that, Patrick. What are you talking about? <laughs> the righteous indignation. Yeah, yeah. And it's suffered a hit, and your proton accelerator is broken a bit. And you're losing your mind, and you're having a fit, so the funky fresh rabbit will take care of it. <laughs> Bucky, Captain Bucky O'Hare, goes when the ordinary rabbit would dare. <laughs> oh, I'm a rude coming at the last minute with Ace Rimmer. Nice. Um, I don't know. Okay, Gilbs is seconding Skylar. Let's put Skylar in. All right. Save the... save Ace Rimmer. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I can't believe we haven't even mentioned Dread Dwarf yet. <laughs> Can we get the whole name in? Nice. If 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 you die, Skylar, that's not on us. <sighs> Skylar, confirm it now if it matters to you. Yeah. <laughs> like, just, just let us know. It's not very woke, this uh, this <laughs> adventure game book, is it? <laughs> Patrick. Patrick, that is a good point. I can't believe I forgot. Jadzia Dax was a good science officer. I especially like Jadzia Dax because, oh, hell, Razor 3, hell on earth. <laughs> Which one was Jadzia Dax again? 
She was um, she was the one that had uh, the symbiote inside her. Oh um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they replaced her character with another character with the same symbiote in in them in the last season. I think because she left to do other stuff, and she was in the the comedy Becca. Oh right, yeah. With um, John Bobo, uh, I did realize, yeah. <laughs> Dealer's choices, Skylar. Keep your secrets. <laughs> well versed in all things mechanical, your engineering officer is an asset to the crew. They can make repairs, create machines, and are knowledgeable in the workings of your starship. If something goes wrong with the ship, you can rely on the entering office, engineering officer's know-how to repair it. Welcome them to the crew. You ask them to place their palm on the scanner. I'm blaming you if these rolls are crap. What the fuck, Skylar? <laughs> <laughs> Get in the gym, Skylar, I'm afraid. But... <laughs> oh, no. Skylar, we only do science you. stuff. We're, we're a science-only ship. You best be hanging your head in shame right now, Skylar. <laughs> okay, security officer. Wharf. Definitely going wharf, not going with yeah. Later's hookup, his booty call. What? Oh, um, Tash no, Tashi <laughs> ah. The character of Tashi R was like, was all right, but what was her name? Um, Diane Crosby, the the actor who like left. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, who left, yeah, yeah. She's like, I don't like her much. <laughs> <laughs> well, she left because she claimed that, like, oh, like all of my scenes are sexist, and it's just like. Have you seen what they've got Councillor Troy and, and um, Beverly Crusher doing? <laughs> like, like... Yeah, wasn't isn't there like a weird line in the scene where she, she mentions like running away from rape gangs on her? Yeah, it's like, it's like, what the fuck? Like, it's really <laughs> intense, which is weird because most other, like, at least Earth is like a human utopia. Like, I thought sort of the human race had gotten pretty good, but yeah, she comes from a messed up place apparently. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm amazed that was in. Star Trek is just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Rape gangs are coming. <laughs> this is like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If that, if that cropped up in like Rick and Morty, I'd be like, oh, it's a bit like. Yeah, yeah, it's probably, a bit much, know, guys. Like, like, you know, like, it's, yeah, it's a bit laying it on a bit thick, you know, like, but it's Star Trek. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I like what Nate said. If it's Worf, he'll be thrown across every room to prove the bad guys are tough. Yeah, which has the opposite effect of making Worf look just like a pansy. <laughs> uh, is it Michael Dawn? Isn't the actor's name? Yeah. Like, yeah, I think so. The number of times that that man has had to lift pieces of polystyrene. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Apparently, um, you and Gilbert just do not vibe on Star Trek, so I'm guessing Gilbert's is a Tasha Yar fan. What? I mean, like, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I was going to defend that. Um, <laughs> Margot Martindale. Margot Martindale. What do I know that name? What is that name? I'm not familiar with that. I think. I think we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna rock on with Wharf because I like. How do, how do I spell Wharf? It's is it? I thought it was O W O R F. Yeah. Yeah, because you're right, because it's not like Wharf like we would spell Wharf, like the real thing. No, I, I think it's that. Right. I could be yeah. wrong, though, I don't know. So your security officer and guards are your first choice for battle, as all of the crew receive a minus three skill penalty during combat. These guys better have good combat roles. So, Wharf stamina. Come on, Wharf. Come on. Nice. Bring in that Klingon energy. Wharf here, right? Okay, and come on, let's see. Let's go <laughs> it's on your a mass, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's average. It's fine. Yeah, he's in the middle. Okay, and we might be able to bump that up with some stuff at some point. All right. Uh, <laughs> John Bubba has had some fantastic, uh, like, um, puns in this. The security officer and a retreating. Yeah, he's, he's fast on the pun, is John Bubba. Absolutely, like, just whip smart. Whip smart. Couldn't decide whether I was saying fast or smart there. Fastest puns in the West. <laughs> okay, next you are introduced to your two security guards, handpicked by security officer Wharf. So let's go to some of the other things that were put in there. <laughs> they even say they're both wearing red shirts. That's brilliant. 
In fact, yeah, so guys, you can't tell them apart. They're wearing red shirts. Like, it doesn't matter. Give me some more good security names. If we're sticking with Star Trek, I wouldn't mind having Odo because I really like Odo. Mm. Um, but Odo's not that much fun if you don't have Quark. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah I, I, I'll throw my vote for that for you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm, I'm, interested, I'm interested to see what else I can get in there. We haven't got... We've got this whole righteous indignation. If we're looking for a name, maybe we should have Dead Eye Duck in there. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be quite funny if, like, in all of this, like... And here is, like, one security officer, a four-armed duck. You might want to, like, this... Isn't this, like, the time where we need to, like, have a Wesley Crusher or something? Because these guys are probably going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick said Hugh the Borg, which I love as an idea. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Guild's Guild's a volunteer to be the one who dies. Mm. <laughs> I'm kind of into that. Yeah, we got Scarlet. Yeah. We can put Guild's in. Um, let's do that. I know we have two security officers, so we've got Hugh the Borg and we've got Guild's. Let's go with that. So let's first, we'll give you your roles first, Guild's. Ah, oh, come on, get into that little box. Said the uh, sex worker to the bishop. And then their gender. Uh, welcoming them to the crew, you ask the first guard to place their palm on the scanner. You better roll well, Gilbs. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, you could have rolled a bit better. So, um, a little bit lower average. But he probably has good skill because Gilbs is a security guard. <laughs> uh, okay, Gilbs, you know, <laughs> like, you, uh, you're looking to prove yourself. Hey, I'm going to give you an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Hans Paul has suggested Chekhov's gun, and well, we're not going with that. I'm sorry, Hans Paul, but that's uh, that's a nice little cut there. I like that. That is good. I like Chekhov's gun. <laughs> I like that a lot. That's a good good name. Hugh the Borg um, is female because yeah, it doesn't it doesn't apply to Borg. So like, it just went with the one that was at the top of the list, right? Welcoming them to the crew, you ask the second guard to place their palm on the scanner. He inserts his USB drive Jesus. in and <laughs> doesn't sleep because he is machine. <laughs> Stamina is insane. Okay. And what's his skill? Ooh, okay. skill not so good. Not so good. But he's, he can get shot for days. <laughs> <laughs> you the tank. Yeah, we're sending him in, like, first every time. Oh. Oh, hey, what? Interesting. Admiral Jackson hands you a tiny bundle of fur. It is a small white cat. The Admiral explains that one of the most important parts of the mission is to research the effects of interstellar travel on pets and their ability to withstand artificial gravity over long periods. The cat's name is... Danny oh. John Jules. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, yes. <laughs> You're probably not going to fit all that in there, though. <laughs> no, I think you're right. So we might have to look for another. Uh, Fulcrum uh, Gilbert said Goose, uh, as in the cat from Captain Marvel, I believe. <laughs> What's the cat from Alien? Is that also Goose? No. Um, what is it called? I, 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 I'm What's trying to rem called? remember the name, and all I can think of is Sigourney Weaver calling it a little shithead. <laughs> <laughs> What are you, cat from Alien? What was the cat in Alien called? What was the cat in Alien? Jonesy. No, John Bubba literally, literally, that came uh, up before you said that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Schrodinger. Schrodinger's not bad. That's not, yeah, bad. that's not a bad one. Physics and peanuts. What more do you want? Yeah. The cat. But that's, yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the idea of having the Red Dwarf reference in there. The notorious um, CAT. <laughs> Puss Diddy. <laughs> Two cat. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Which which are we going to go with? So we've got Goose, Mr. Wiggles, Schrodinger, Jonesy. Um, I like Schrodinger. Let's pick that one. All right. I can't do the accent, or at least I'm not going to bother trying. Okay, to the starship. 
With your brave crew, the starship Righteous Indignation, you give, a, <laughs> you give Admiral Jackson a salute. The Admiral gives one final look at the ship's cat and says, Take good care of Schrodinger. Actually, you should do it since it's Admiral Jackson. Oh, yeah, sir. Take good care, Schrodinger. <laughs> Godspeed, Captain Brannigan. Suddenly, bursting in and out of breath, a young man arrives. He apologizes profusely to the Admiral for his delay. Admiral Jackson informs you that this ensign is a son of an important senator and will be accompanying you on the mission. The ensign's name is... Wesley Crusher, obviously. <laughs> Don't even, we're not even voting on this. It's Wesley Crusher. I feel more like Vindicate because it came up already earlier on. So yes, Wesley Crusher. <laughs> you are now ready to set off. You take your seat on the bridge and prepare yourself for the adventure ahead. Dismissed. And we begin with our first of our illustrations. Ooh. Firing off in this legally distinct spaceship. That looks like it looks like pieces of the ship are being blown off there. It really does. Actually, I think that is what's happening. I feel yeah. like this might be an inappropriate... Hmm. Okay. Yeah, if they're not used oh, the wait. right picture. It immediately oh, starts to replace panic. From your seat at the helm of the starship Righteous Indignation, you study the VDU anxiously. Engineering section has reported an overdrive malfunction, which has locked the warp engines at a 10% velocity gain. You are watching the velocity indicator advancing rapidly through the safe region toward overload. You hit the communicator button and call engineering for further news. It is not good. The malfunction cannot be traced and it will take another 13 minutes for a system check to provide a full analysis. You are heading towards the Celsian Void, a known black hole. You may or may not avoid it, but Science Officer Spock has another plan. If you swing the ship through its immense gravitational pull, its gravity drag may help reduce your speed as you travel away from it. This is worth a try, but the navigational tuning will have to be precise. You swing the starship hard to starboard as you enter the Celsian's gravitational field and fasten your eyes on the velocity indicator. To your great relief, the plan seems to be working. The gain comes down from 10% to 5% to 0 to minus 5%. Loud cheers come from the crew, but you are still watching the velocity indicator. It is now showing minus 15%, then minus 25% and still falling. The righteous indignation is being sucked into the Celsian void. You hit the red alert button and instruct all ship's personnel to strap themselves down. The ship begins to whine and shake as it rapidly accelerates toward the black hole. There is nothing you can do to avert the impending disaster. An almighty explosion rocks the ship. All the crew, including you, lose consciousness. Shit. You and the other members of the crew are regaining consciousness. Again, you hit the communicator and call for systems damage reports. All systems appear to be intact until engineering reports that the warp drive engines are dead. You are floating in space, but your drive reactors should be operational in 20 to 30 minutes. Your navigation officer is bewildered. He cannot identify your whereabouts, and the computer reports you are in uncharted space. Science Officer Spock has run an event analysis, and you appear to have gone through the black hole, through a dimension warp, and you are now in what seems to be a parallel universe. Not happy with this? <laughs> Not how black holes work, but okay. Yeah, we're back to this. Like This seems to be, I think this is an 80s game. Yeah. Um, and it seems to be all of this like 80s science was just like, that's what black holes are. They take you to like other dimensions or they no. transport you through space. They're no. the same as wormholes. Everyone knows that. They're not holes, they're objects. It's a really bad name for them. They should be called it's, black balls. It's no, like a wait. sink in the in the world. And everything's <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> they should be called, but yeah, the name hole is really like bad because they're not holes, they're they're just like really, really fuck off densely packed mass. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, a black hole shouldn't be a problem to us anyway because we have warp engines. Oh. Uh, right? So we can travel like what? What's the maximum warp? Like nine? Like nine times the speed of light? Like that should be able to outrun a black hole. That's true, actually. Yeah. Mm. I suppose hmm, maybe the damage. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. You're, uh, where are we? After some delay, you regain warp drive. Long-range scan indicates three solar systems ahead, of which two may have intelligent life. What are your orders, Captain? 
Set course for the life-bearing system ahead. Set course for the life-bearing system on the port side. Or set course for the barren system on the starboard side. Okay. So I think we can rule out the barren system, like, right now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The barren system seems like the bad place to go. Like, yeah, let's go like... where there's no support for life and we can get no help of supplies or rescue. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> Neil <deGrasse> <laughs> that actually means a lot to me. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, okay, Patrick is saying go port. So life-bearing system on the port side. Uh, yeah. I mean, like it should definitely be one of the life-bearing systems. And it doesn't really matter which, I don't think, because we have no information on either of them. Yeah, just, like one's ahead of it. Like I guess ahead of us because it means we don't have to turn the ship, but <laughs> it's very minor. But yeah, I suppose. I suppose like maybe, maybe because once you once you're in a position like this where you're somewhere and you don't know how you're going to get back, I guess you're into like a different mode. You're in like survival mode, like you know, and like now it's like, do we have enough fuel? You have to be suddenly like, you know, more conscious of like using. Although I suppose it's warp drives. I don't know what the lithium crystals last, last forever. Am I stupid? Actually, like, um, Harrison, uh, yeah. lithium crystals uh, last for eighty hundred billion years. You fuck with. I, I I don't know. I mean, I don't like. I imagine a starship needs to be periodically serviced. You know, it's like any other kind of vessel. But yeah, I suppose yeah, because I, I should just really try and remember Voyager more. But I think it tells you about Voyager that I can't. I, mean, I, I should watch more. Voyager, but I like. I just I tried watching it. And I couldn't get into it. I don't know. There was something like. Uh... I think one of the problems with those three, Next Gen, DS9, and Voyager, mm -hmm. I think the slight issue with they're all too similar to each other. So the first one you fall in love with, you will never like the others as much. Yeah. You're just like, no, nah, you're not the same. You're trying to be the same, but you're not. Yeah. Like, that's how I am with DS9. Like, I really like the other shows, but just I don't love them like I love DS9. Yeah. I, I, try, I, I got further into DS9 than I did into Voyager. I'll say that much. Um, because okay. I, I do love Quark and Odo. But any, anyway, anyway, this is the no, Star Trek podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, so John said straight ahead, I believe that's bow in nautical terms. Um, oh, Nate, I love DS9 except the ending. Yeah, the, yeah. Ugh, I hate Odo's ending. Fucking... <laughs> anyway. Uh, but I think we are going to go to port because that's what we have the most votes for. So yeah, I mean, I'm it. fine with port. That's... Really? Oh, sure. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Dorito for like out for ages <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah uh, he, he does look like a, he does look like like a particularly aggressive Veruca yeah so, this is um this this is actually quite shocking how like, how much this is ripped off from Star Trek <laughs> <laughs> he's even got Worf's little like um, oh his little bandolier stash, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah he has yeah you travel at subwarp speed to allow your sensors to scan for more information. They pick up a small object several thousand kilometers ahead and traveling toward you. You continue cautiously. At five kilometers, it stops, and you do likewise. Sensors report a Class D star cruiser, and you prepare yourself with shields up. A message comes in, and you transfer it to the screen. A reptilian face appears in the uniform of authority. As your translator tunes in, the alien's message becomes clear. I am Commander McTell of the Imperial Granzig Confederation. Oh, Ganzig Confederation. <laughs> Mama! <laughs> We're the Imperial Danzig Confederation. Um, you are a non-registered ship trespassing within Imperial territory. Identify yourself and state your purpose. What will your reply be? Do you identify yourself as he wishes? Do we run an info scan on the Imperial Ganzig Confederation? Or do we open fire? <laughs> what the fuck? Can we not open fire, please? Like, 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 <laughs> no, Skylar. No. <laughs> Skylar. We're not Skylar doing that. Woke up and chose violence. <laughs> identify uh, ourselves. I mean, ideally both identify and run an info scan, but... Yeah, that, right. I, I, I'm going to, like... Meta game a bit. I chose that run an info scan. It, it's it, all it is is it confirms you don't know who they are because I, I thought it was like you scan them to find no. 
you like ask the computer if the computer knows anything about them. And the computer goes, no, never seen him before. <laughs> God damn it, Gilbert, no. <laughs> we can't do this. We are the Federation. <laughs> We're some form of Federation. Maybe not, you know, like... We didn't pay for the license for that federation, but we're a federation. John. Oh, okay, right. Okay, fine. This, this, this hurts. Somehow, we are Captain Murder Hobo. This <laughs> already hurts, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nate wanted to run a scan, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> We're pirates now. <laughs> okay. Fine. Open fire. Our audience. Like... <laughs> Both ships open fire. This will be a battle to the death. Fuck. Like war criminals now. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Well, what right. happened, guys? Oh, well, we asked this like alien ship to identify itself and it just started fucking blasting. Like, like. <laughs> Okay, right. Um, fire. Righteous indignation takes aim at Ganzig Star Cruiser. And we don't do very well. <laughs> Good. We deserve to die. <laughs> oh, I think I think we did. Okay, no, actually, I think we did still hit them, I think. Okay, right. Let's try it. So like, uh You'd think on the Enterprise, like if like they just in if that happened on the Enterprise and the cat and Picard was just like just open fire, you'd think <laughs> someone would have been like you sure? <laughs> Ooh, we took a hit there. Right, okay. Let's fire. Uh, boop. Okay, I don't know what this targeting system thing here is supposed to be doing, but uh, we hit. All right. So unlike this where we would roll at the same time with um, the Forest of Doom, we're doing it oh, like so do you... one at a time. No. Oh. So when the dice land, does the, the, the little circle have to be in the the hit zone of the I don't think so. Cause I think wherever it goes is just the number that displays oh, on the dice. Right. So that's right, just right. showing like where we have to hit, I think. Like so if mm. we rolled here, we would miss, I think is the idea. We're doing not too badly. I mean, we're probably gonna win, but like this but guy is Equally as good at hitting us, but should we? I... Win? <laughs> well, probably not. No, but you know. <laughs> look, we never had the moral high ground before. Yeah, but we could have done. <laughs> <laughs> we could have done damage. Ah, oh. but no, here we are killing people. All oh, those we missed. Moldy Dorito people probably had families, you know. <laughs> Shit, they were probably on the ship with them. <laughs> it was just like a regular vessel. It, it thought that you'd come out of cloak to attack it. Like fucking monsters, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a science vessel there to like uh Investigate yeah. the the uh, was it the subspace anomaly that was that black hole? Or just black like hole. some kind of patrol vessel. It's just like, oh hey, who are you? Like you know, oh. like, that's all that's all that was. You know, like, this is tough. Like if we don't get our shields back, your final shot decimates your opponent. We defeat the Star Cruiser. If we don't get our shields back, like our ship is, our ship is in bad shape. Yeah. We lost 12 on our shields there. We might need to be more careful about like interstellar attacks. Like, <laughs> okay. So, you probe ahead into space with your long-range scanners. On the fringe of your scan radius to port is a small star with an orbiting solar system which you may head for. Otherwise, you may increase speed to warp and head off into deep space. So, search around the small star or just go off into the unknown, see what else. It seems like we came into an inhabited system. We should probably check out the system. I, I mean, they won't like us. Sure anymore. <laughs> That's true, yeah. I suppose now, like, now what are we, like, this is uh, an invasion? Can we occupy something? Yeah, this is... Um... <laughs> 
and that was the human incursion. This this game has gone in a direction that I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> Hans Paul, let's warp away from our war crime. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Gilbert has pointed out it may have been a bad move, but it feels very Zap Brannigan. It, it is like the idea of like Zap Brannigan on board with Spock there. <laughs> like open is just raising an eyebrow, it's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Are you sure that's logical, Captain? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should More have happened than that. The best diplomacy is war. Mind you, though, I bet if we'd said, if we did identified ourselves, it'd have been like, let's fight, fuck you. <laughs> I, it is. Really? <laughs> uh, yeah, like it, you can do more interesting things, like, but they demand that you surrender or fight. Oh, uh, uh, right, okay. Um, so let's go. Let's see what people are saying. <laughs> they were coming right at us. Like, <laughs> <laughs> let's not get into those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Small star says Gilbert. So does Nate. So does Skylar. I think that is where we are heading. Sorry, Hans, but we're not gonna uh, hit and run. It looks like on this. This is just like the Discovery Picard series, is it? I, I, I've heard it's bad. <laughs> I have, yeah, I haven't seen Picard. I started watching Discovery, but I I remember the the tardigrade, the space tardigrade, and that's it. I like I what's his name? Alex Kurtzman, the showrunner for like all the new Star Trek. Like they're all terrible. Like they all suck. I haven't I've watched reviews of, of them and I'm kinda like, yeah, I've got all the I've got everything I need to know right here. I'm not watching this. Yeah. I do hope we can get some different Star Trek happening. But anyway. It's it's not gonna happen because TV has changed too much. TV is so much more like movies now. So you, you can't have like an hour long episode where nothing really happens and people just talk, you know? Maybe. No. Um where are we here? As you approach a small star, your scanners pick up two planets in orbit. One is a large red planet, while the other planet is a dull blue. What are your orders, Captain? Set course for the large red planet, or set course for the dull blue planet? Matrix references, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i kind of drawn to blue more than the red, really, because red could be lava or, or like fire or yeah i know you mean like those blue like might be like planet, like mars and it's all rusty and i, don't I know. think you're right <laughs> whereas blue could be like an ocean planet maybe and that's that, that's what i was thinking yeah blue like suggests it could be water i mean god knows it'll turn out it's like no it's frozen methane fools <laughs> uh what we got here uh, nate saying when I'm in command, every mission is a suicide mission. <laughs> so says Zap Brannigan. How many votes we got? Okay, we got a lot going for blue. Is it a red dwarf? Well, it's not a star is the problem. If it was a star, it could be a red dwarf. Yeah. But if it's a planet, it can't be, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. We've got a vote for red from Nate, vote for red from Patrick, but we have three votes for blue. Looks like we're going blue. Let's do that. Gilbert, how much of that was based on your Halo 16, fan? Seven. It gets a little blue. <laughs> <laughs> you increase speed towards a dull blue planet and start to orbit it. Short-range scanners indicate that it is a life-bearing planet. The most heavily populated area appears to be a city in the center of a large island. What are your orders, Captain? Beam down to the city center. Or leave orbit and continue onwards. Uh, oh. Well, we might as well beam down now that we're here. Now, yeah, it would be rude to just like turn up, like hover around, kill some of their guys, and not say hello. Mm. It's blue dabba dee dabba die. I, I bought that single. Did you? But I'm not proud of it, but I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, like, when, when you finally, well, I never, like, I think, sat down and listened to that song for a very, yeah. very long time. You know, you only heard it. And when I finally did, and you're like, what's this about a blue world? <laughs> like, everything yeah. that isn't that chorus is dreadful. And he lives in a blue world in a blue house with his blue dog. <laughs> blue <blues. laughs> I'm blue. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> everyone at school when when I was at school and it was like a hit though. Everyone said it sounded like in Aberdeen I will die, and I can't not hear that now. Oh. <laughs> I will die in Aberdeen. In Aberdeen. <laughs> I was told by someone that it was, um, I'm blue, if I was green, I would die. Uh, so I, I believe that for a very long time. Yeah. I think we are beaming down. Skylar saying city centre, so is uh, Gilbert, and uh, Hans is also saying, let's beam down. Let's go and uh, give them our card, see if the insurance can deal with this. <laughs> let's, go to, let's beam down and just start... Fucking Mars attacks in everyone, <laughs> like, like based on <laughs> you. You watch that. That is going to be one of the options, isn't it? Oh, do we have to pick an away crew? Okay, okay. Well, we Assemble your crew. Then. <laughs> Assemble your crew for the dull blue planet with the city in the center of a large island. So we've got science officer Spock, medical officer. That's why there officer. Isn't a first officer. I was wondering why there wasn't a first officer, and this is why because we have to go. <laughs> oh, because we have to go on the away. Team. Yeah. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Okay, hmm. right. Who are we taking with us? So Spock is like has some of our best stats of anyone. Yeah. So it might be good to take Spock. Who Hugh has really good stamina. I mean, is there a limit? Some of your uh, oh, Do you know what? I'm kind of like let's take everyone but Skylar. <laughs> <laughs> d- yes, make, yes, make it so. <laughs> They yes, know what they were doing. So. Um, right. And, oh, and let's not take um, the medical officer. The oh, medical. Uh, having said that, is this going to be the kind of thing where we actually need her? Because, <laughs> well, because I'd like to heal us, like if we have a fight. Yeah. Okay. Well. Right. Um, let's bring along Wharf. Yeah. Okay, so we can only add three, I think. Okay. Because it cancelled everyone else. So, so hang on, wait, can I? Nope. Okay, we are we are in. We are locked okay. in, I think. I think that's pretty solid. If there are no crew available to beam down with you, the mission is too risky. Okay, beam down. Ah. We appear in just a what looks like North Coventry. Hmm. So you materialize on the planet's surface and look around. You're in a wide street of some kind, which is completely deserted. Buildings of sorts line the streets, and behind you, a large building stands at the end of the road. The buildings are strange structures. They are a multitude of shapes and sizes, all looking incomplete. Continue down the road, looking for signs of life. Approach the large building behind you, or try one of the smaller buildings. Interesting. This is very Forest of Doom now, like that. Yeah. Now we're just like going into buildings. I I honestly don't know. It's a different point. author, this as well. It's like Steve Jackson, I think, or something. He does good work. Yeah, doesn't he write doesn't he write other stuff? Yeah, he's mainly known for games and um like role play uh systems. Yeah. Mm. I'm trying to think I'm trying to think. Has he, has he got something to do with Munchkin? Yeah, yeah, that's him. Uh, right, that is where I know that game from. Or it's at least Steve Jackson games, so it's published by him. I don't know if he actually like came up with it or whatever. But but that finally explains where that's coming through. He did, <laughs> Patrick he did, was saying Hugh and Skyler. He did a lot of the um, the Choose Your Own Adventure books as well, though. The, um, Ian Livingston and Steve Jackson. I'm just looking at like the stack I've got over there, and there's like. Uh, the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. That was him. And uh, I had I did buy that book. I never read it, but I bought it intending to once. Yeah. Well, I've got a copy here now. So. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Let's see. Uh what we've got here. John Baba Deserted must have landed during a zombie apocalypse. Hans said Vrax outpost. Small building, small building, large building down the road. So smaller building is winning at the moment. Yeah, I think that's where we're headed with the votes that we got. So let's go into that small building. <laughs> let's like just break into some poor woman's house and <laughs> shoot a dog. <laughs> I can see draw your faces and shoot is an option. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you arrive at an odd-shaped building with rounded walls. Several strange and apparently meaningless sticks protrude from the front walls. The door is open and you cautiously walk inside. 
Slumped over a table is a bulky figure, apparently asleep. Your, entra- your entrance disturbs the creature, and it raises its head, sees you, and springs to its foot. Rather than legs, it has a single stump, something like a tree trunk. It bellows loudly, and your translator does not translate. Hold your hands up to show that you mean no harm, or draw your phaser and shoot. Um, <laughs> I, I don't feel like I can say anything that will convince you guys. I think you're going to do what you want to do. Yeah, go on, you ghouls. Although, <laughs> to be fair, Skylar has, has said surrender. So, Okay, all right. I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. We can see if like Spock or Worf can take care of this dude. Hans Paul also says, hands up, no harm. Okay, okay. Ooh, the one foot beast, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, make friends with that. <laughs> we had a big new ship that we wanted to try out. <laughs> uh, okay, so Patrick's saying no harm because the doctor's there. Yeah, that's true. Okay. See, I don't know what it's going to do with that. I don't know whether it's going to, like, if we go into a combat, then make us choose who is doing that combat. Maybe, maybe. <sighs> the gilbs. Gilbs. <laughs> this is how you play Kotor as well. Kotor? Uh, Knights of the Old Republic, a Star Wars RPG. No. And, uh, Gilbert always tells me about how basically he just murders everyone in it. He's just Sith all day. Oh my god. Speaking of games like that, I was telling these lot about... Um, We're like uh, opposites, Gilbert. I like every game where you get like a, a moral path. I'm always the good boy. Like the suffering, I was always good talk. You know, I was like... just about to bring up the suffering because we were talking about it the other day while we were playing Halo. Yeah, and I was like, I bet Gilbert, if he plays the suffering, will just murder everyone. The thing is, it's harder to be good, especially in the suffering, where like you know you can walk into a new area and the, your companion's head might just fall off, <laughs> like because that game was buggy <laughs> as fuck. But yeah, it was it was tough. Like you had to work at being a good boy. You had to like reset halfway through a stage because oh my companion has just fucking blundered into some um what were they called like um not boomers riflemen or something no oh, those guys yeah yeah oh yeah it was horrible how often that would happen okay all right so we've um we've had has anyone played vampire Do you know what i tried restarting that today um but I, I, I sort of couldn't. I didn't have the patience today for the number of menus in it. It's quite good, but it it takes a lot of time. Vampire or vampire, whatever you pronounce it. Never played it, my friend. It's it's good, but it's like it's quite an in depth sort of RPG. It's like one of those ones where like you have to do a lot of work to be the good guy and keep everyone alive. Yeah. Um, so I like. Love <laughs> yeah, I love being a good boy in video games. I I don't know, like. It helps for the completionist element because that's often the way it is. It's like, ah, but there's a proper way to do it. If mm. you do all this and do all that, you can do it properly. Anyway, um, I think we've voted. So we've had a we've had a tie. We've had three votes for shoot and three votes for hands up. Oh my god! So that means you're the tiebreaker, Jackson. Well, so, hands up, yeah. Obviously, I'm not shooting this poor one foot man. Uh, yeah, like as um, who was it who said it? Who was it who said that Peggy didn't do anything? Skylar, the ship was part of an empire. Peggy over here was just chilling. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, we we can sort of see that maybe, but the ship will probably get us in more trouble than Peggy will. (laughs) Yeah. The creature settles down. It was apparently just surprised at having been awoken from its sleep by a complete stranger. And such ugly ones at that. It explains that it is a Timol and seems to be quite a friendly creature. It hops around the room and offers you food and drink, which you politely decline. This planet is a settlement planet populated by all sorts of different aliens. At first, mainly creatures who could not bear their own home planets and those that are highly adventurous. As the planet proved to be a pleasant place to live with a gentle climate, it was not long before word spread and throughout the galaxy, sorry, word spread throughout the galaxy of the promised land of freedom and equality, attracting many more settlers. The problem was that no one was allowed to assume a position of responsibility. Everyone was entirely equal. The result is that, after many years of the settlement, the place is in utter chaos. Its inhabitants have not even decided on a name for the planet. You explain your own predicament to the Timol, 
how you are lost in a universe parallel to your own. The creature knows little about astronomy and interstellar travel, but suggests you head for the planet Kuhl Matter, as its civilization is very advanced. You thank him for this information and leave. Do we head for the main building at the end of the road, or do we beam up to the ship to travel onwards? Well, I mean, I'm kind of up for beaming up, really. Firstly, because, like, we have a lead, and that's mm. something, right? And secondly, because, like, I don't know. Maybe we made a mistake bringing bringing the uh, the doctor with us. I don't know. Maybe I because I completely see the like how that might be a risk reward thing in this game of like yeah if you don't have the doctor you're gonna have a hard time healing up characters or maybe it's that thing of like if you find someone who's sick you need to have the I bet that's it. I bet it's that really you need to. It's probably the same as the Forest of Doom. You need to have memorized this book already. You know that, well, actually, if you go down to this planet, there is a person down there who is sick who will require the doctor to turn up and do a look roll yeah. uh, to see if they can cure their genophage to uh, save all their children who are dying of uh, inside out eyelids. And something along those lines. So, what have we got? Uh, Hans is saying going to the main building, as is Skylar. But Patrick so far is saying, let's beam on up. Ah, uh, John Bubba. The suffering that brings back memories. It's a very good game, isn't it, John? Uh, you're on mute, Jackson. Did what the fuck? Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. You're still here. We still got you here. You still got me. Okay, good. Yeah. Do you ever play the suffering ties that bind? I have played part of it. John Bubba, did you play it? Okay, John also wants us to go to the main building, so that is where we're going to head, based on our votes that we have in the chat. Um, but yeah, Suffering in the Ties that Bind. I, I, why didn't it? Why wasn't that game as good? Because I couldn't tell you why. I mean, part of the problem was that it was even more buggy than The Suffering. <laughs> yeah, okay, I can go with that. Like, like it was really bad. <laughs> so where are we going? Main building. Let's see what's in there. Steps lead up to the large building. An inscription on the door indicates that it is a building of some importance. You knock, but there is no reply, although you can hear excited chatter coming from within. You try the door. It opens and you step into a large entrance hallway. Several pairs of aliens of a variety of shapes and sizes cross the corridor in front of you, travelling purposely from room to room and arguing excitedly with each other. A mysterious creature, dressed in shadowy blue robes, notices you and shuffles over. Its face cannot be seen, but its eyes shine bright blue at you. It speaks, and your translator interprets. Um, ah, you look interesting. Where do you think the new medicine house should go? You explain that you are new to these parts and that you would like to meet some person of authority. The alien laughs. <laughs> no one has authority here, my friend. We are all equal. Come, let me show you round. You let him take you. To the main meeting hall, or on a general tour. What would we like, guys? Nope, no, nope, go back. What do we want? Do we want to get a general tour, or just to the main meeting hall? I mean, general, I guess. Yeah, I would have said that. What's John saying there? The ties that bind was a bit better in some ways, but worse in others. Only two weapons you can carry and the whole multiple personalities thing in the story. But more weapons choices is good. I, mm. I like the ties that bind. I'll, I'll be honest. I I thought it was enjoyable enough. You know, it wasn't as good as the first one, but I, I still like it. I still own it. So I, I think my biggest issue with it, as I think I had that issue that some... Um, What's the word uh, that some uh, games and sequels have is mm. that it kind of looks too much into stuff. I think, like one of the things that I love about the suffering is I feel there's a very good balance between knowing what the things are and what's going on and the mystery of it, yeah. like what's actually causing it. And ties that bind then goes a bit further, like into talks backstory, and I'm just not as interested in it. Yeah, it was kind of like it made sense that all these monsters were on Carnate Island because it's like this cursed place that's been like thing. But when you're in like Baltimore, it's like, eh, you can kind of say, oh, talk's so kind of corrupt that he's making these things appear or 
whatever. But it's just like, why is the Doctor from Carnate here? Why, you know? It's, eh. Yeah, just just because he was a cool character, they're like, oh, we'll just keep the Doctor around. Yeah, it's like, uh, like I can kind of see past it, but you know, whatever. I'm with you. So we're we're getting votes for the general tour. So let's do it and see what's going on. I guess we're stuck here, so we might as well learn stuff about this new universe we're in. Yeah. Your guide, who is called Fioral, shows you from room to room, explaining the planet. Our gods are freedom and equality, says the little creature. This is an extremely pleasant planet to live on, and it welcomes settlers of all types. Everyone is entirely equal, whether they have lived here all their lives or have just arrived. Everyone may also do anything they like here. We have no need for laws. He shows you around and th- around the records office, planning area and rooms of state, all of which supposedly are full of people snorting coke, drinking, <laughs> or, you know, like fornication, just like doing whatever they damn well please. Yeah, I mean, I can see some fairly <clears throat> obvious problems with that. Or maybe they're all just like not knobheads. I don't know. On the way back to the debating chamber, you pass the guard room. You ask why, if there are no laws, they have the need for guards. Fioral stops and explains, Guards do not guard things. We do not need to protect things. It's just that some members of our community get pleasure out of attacking others. And of course, they are free to do so as they wish. But, in fairness to the rest of the population, they dress up in uniform. Oh, clicking the wrong bit. They dress up in uniforms and call themselves guards, so as to warn others that they must be on guard whenever a guard passes. Do you understand, Captain Brannigan? While you are considering this, however, three of these guards have left their room and have crept up behind you. They leap on your backs and wrestle with you. Fioral backs away. You must fight. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Sure. This... Okay. <laughs> I mean, my brain is going to some pretty dark places right now. <laughs> this this is a script that like wouldn't have got through like the story break. <laughs> like, yeah. next end. like this is one where we're going. No, no, guys, like fix that. We, we're not doing this. No, this this doesn't work. Like, it's almost like like an inversion of that. Um... Like series one next gen episode where they go to that planet where it's like it's completely idyllic and um but like oh we all love each other and we have loads of sex and we all grow our own crops and it's brilliant yay but then it turns out that they just kill people for like the most minor transgression <laughs> you know, like, yeah yeah because Wesley didn't notice flowers and they want to kill him it's like oh mm. yeah he didn't notice off. a keep off the grass sign yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Skylar, planet murder hobo. It does have like a sort of. This is essentially GTA Vice City. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, without the eighties music, Star Trek battle music kicks in. Okay, right. Let's let's see what we can do in this fight. Right. Oh, so here. Oh. Yeah. Oh no. Right. Hang on. There yeah. we go. That's a bit better. Good. Uh, that's. Let's have Spock, because that guy's got better stamina. This is cool. This is cool. Okay, okay. This this is interesting. This is more interesting. So we can, hopefully, as long as we don't have four people, try and protect the Doctor a bit. Yeah. Um, let's try it out. See what happens when we fight. Bradigan and First Guard square off against each other. So this is more like the Forest of Doom combat. Mm. Okay. Right. Here we got that. Okay. Vulcan nerve grip. Oh, Oh, the the doctor surprises the first guard with a sudden attack. That's cool. Okay, all right. I'm not entirely sure like what the results were at the end of that. So let's fight on. We might have to start using this quick combat because this combat is a bit time consuming. It's less time consuming than us just waffling on about shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which I feel like we've done a lot of this episode. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's quick combat do? Okay. Uh, quick combat. Okay. Yeah. Well, that is maybe, yeah, that is maybe better, actually. Because <laughs> we don't seem to... It's not like we can... I don't think we can use items and things during the fight. Like uh, we right, could okay. before, so... We don't have the sort of same need to do it like turn by turn as we did before. Yeah, it is. This does seem to be a bit of a harder game, maybe. Well, I suppose, yeah, maybe we have more opportunities to heal. Okay, so we've got one of the guards down. Nice. And let's see what we do with the rest. Can we take these other guys? There we go. Threat eliminated. Nice. You managed to defeat all the guards. Fioral steps back out of the shadows and approaches you. He seems not to be the least bit surprised by the scuffle. You ask why the guards attacked. Oh, for no reason, Branigan, he says. They are free to do anything they like. This this is like the kind of world you'd have to have a gun on you at all times. When you just... <laughs> it is it is kind of made us go, like, okay, so it isn't that bad that we just killed all those people we found. Or at least, you know, there's somewhere where we'll be able to hide. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we can Julian Assange ourselves away in here for <laughs> yeah. a while. On planet, no fucks given. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, just us and space Roman Polanski. Oh, I still God. make movies, you know. No, <laughs> yeah. no. We know Roman, but you're still a rapist. <laughs> yeah, no, get away. Um, let's see. So, do we request to enter the main debating chamber? Do we ask to enter the maps and travel room? Or do we leave the building and return to the ship? We should rob this place blind, right? Uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> your attitude's changed now. Now that we've learned more, well, I mean, more. like, like, I'm assuming that like we're lost in space. The prime directive is out the window. <laughs> okay, but you have often had a go at Janeway for not following That's the prime. True. Directive. That's true. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> He's in the same position. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how to catch a Trek nerd out like, yeah shit uh, <laughs> I don't know I, 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 I do love the idea of like a kind of Picard going number one I want to talk to you listen prime directive it's all well and good okay but these guys are fucking idiots right <laughs> 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 I mean if we didn't if we didn't take advantage of this number one we'd be as bad as they are right <laughs> oh, they should make a Star Trek like that with like a corrupt <laughs> captain that'd be boss can you imagine, like Star Trek crossed with the shield, and the captain's like, prime directive is all well and good. <laughs> all I'm saying is, their system allows us to just take things, so we can. I, I like the idea of like, I do like the idea of like, like a, a Star Trek captain, like, like maybe he's a coward, and his whole thing is just how he keeps him and his ship out of trouble, like. Yeah. He's constantly ignoring things, just trying not to be involved. <laughs> but like, um, is it was it that law? No, there's a Flash something series book. It might be. Like, there's also a, there was a Warhammer book. Um, I think it's Caiaphas Kane. I think his name is, or something like that. Who is just like he's like a, a commissar in the Imperial Army, and he's just a coward. Mm. And so, like, all the books are just how he's trying to avoid being in war. That's quite cool. I like that. Yeah, it, yeah, a lot of it is like him accidentally being a hero, like most of those, but like um, Rincewind and Discworld books. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool. So I think we are going to the map room to go see what's happening. Isn't that just the mirror of universe? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, map room it is. Let's see what's in there. The travel and maps room is in a state of chaos. Actually, this is a good idea, because if we we're going to go to that planet, it's probably best that we know where it is. Yeah. Uh, books and charts lie all over the floor and the various tables in the room. A small, withered alien with a large head, blue skin and long fingers is asleep in one corner, but wakes as you enter. You ask first for maps of the planet, but can learn a little from, but can learn little from them. While you wonder whether any of the star charts will be of use, the little man finds a large map and allows you to study it. Apparently you are in a solar system around the sun Magnus. Apart from this one, there is only one other life-bearing planet in the system, 
called Trax. Orbiting Magnus, a little farther out, Trax was recently devastated by war, and many of its inhabitants left to settle on this planet. The other two nearest planets, although light years away, are Kuhl Matter, orbiting a purple sun, and McCommon, orbiting a double star. No black holes are to be found on the chart. You thank the creature for his help and leave the building, bidding goodbye to Fioral as you leave. You head outside to return to the righteous indignation. Okay, okay, okay. So we've got like the last 10 minutes of the stream coming up, so um, we'll see just what choices they're making. When we get to about an hour and 30, we'll just be calling it quits. Um, if you haven't already, guys, please do uh, leave us a like. And if you're enjoying what we do here and you haven't done so already, check out uh, in the description below. I think there should be a link to the Discord in there for you, so you can come and hang out with us there. Um, back on the bridge, you set coordinates for your next journey. Another life-bearing planet orbits the same sun a little further out. Medical officer, the Doctor, tends to the wounded on board the ship. Two stamina are restored to any injured crew members. That's interesting. Let's have a little ganders. We do get a map, which is interesting. Oh, okay. So that's Magnus. That's a star we're on. This map, I think, is going to be quite hard to follow. At least I'm... Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And this is our adventure sheet. So we're at 16. Spock is at 18. Wolf's doing okay. Okay, so in terms of stamina, we're actually doing all right at the moment, other than us and Spock are two off of our max. That's... Okay, that's nice. Yeah, we're fine. Uh, so what do we do? Do we orbit the life-bearing planet, or do we set course for the purple sun some light years away? So that's where we've been advised to go. What are your thoughts, Jackson? Some light years away. Yeah. So that that could be a long trip, even at like multiple warp speeds. I suppose, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. That could be like hours. <laughs> now we've already established this. This isn't the most accurate. Of, um... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just basing this off on the information I have. Yeah. Um... Okay. So we've got two opposing thoughts. Uh, Gilbert saying the life-bearing planet first, um, but Patrick is saying go where advised. Wasn't that the life-bearing planet? Well, there was two, he said, in this system. There's the one that we were on now, and there's the one that's um, war that's recently had a war there, so I assume this is that one. Uh, that's the one we'd be orbiting. Uh, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Purple place, says John Bubba. Purple planet. Life-bearing planet might be a trap. Okay, says Hans. But we have Skylar saying life-bearing planet. So, one, two, three. Okay, purple is winning. Let's head on over and see what this... I keep forgetting what it's called. Calamute? Something like that. Whatever this place is. Approaching the purple star, your scanners indicate that the second planet has an atmosphere ideal for life. You drop into orbit around this planet and scan the surface. There are strong indications of intelligent activity. Indeed, it is likely that the planet's civilization is further advanced than your own. What are your orders, Captain? Do we beam down, or do we leave orbit and continue onwards? Make it so. I think we're beaming down, guys, right? Yeah, I, 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 yeah let's not... Fuck we've around. already voted to come here. Let's let's not miss it. So we shall assemble our crew. Uh, maybe we should put in some suggestions for assembling the crew now we sort of know a bit more. Yeah. We have three people we can take, so who can we take? We can take our science officer, our medical officer, Skylar uh, for engineering, uh, Worf, or Gilbs, and Hugh. I kind of think Worf's a must. Worf is... Yeah, I think you're right. Like his combat skill isn't incredible, but his stamina is just off the chart, though. Yeah, yeah, which means he could probably get like his and his combat skill is high enough that he'll probably win the numbers game on it. Mm. So let's let, let's go with that. Let's make sure we get Wharf in there. Yes, make it so. <laughs> go with the war party. <laughs> this is Patrick. What's just all security? Wharf, Skylar, and me. Says guilds. No. Science, engineering, and guilds. Which is another, that's a second vote for Skylar and guilds to be true. in we there. Take, we could take like Hugh the Borg. 
who's like nails can read. Really... He's he's really he's really tanky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nuke the site from orbit. Only way to be sure. No. 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 Okay, I think we're I think we're taking Skylar because Skylar wants to be taken, and there's been like multiple votes. All right. All right. Okay. Look, we'll, we've got Worf, and then we'll take we'll take Gilbert. We can't let Skylar get into combat. <laughs> Wait, what? Did you choose them all? I don't think I chose Worf, Skylar, and Gilbs. I I thought I only chose two people there, not three. I thought hmm. you chose Worf, Skylar, and Gilbs. I don't know. Maybe I you tried didn't. to. I tried to. Let's see. Let's see what. Let's see what happened. That. Oh, hello. <laughs> Whatever this guy is. You try an all frequency broadcast several times, but receive no messages in reply. You and your Q crew enter the transmitter unit and beam down to the surface. You materialize in a deserted street. Tall buildings on one side tower over you, while on the other side of the street, the buildings are small. Perhaps these are private dwellings. The architecture is alien, but no life of any kind can be seen. In the distance ahead of you, down the road, you hear a whirring sound. Soon, you can see a strange vehicle which seems to be heading towards you. It is a hover car of some kind and is moving slowly. As you decide what to do, your translator picks up a sound. Uh, let's see, what voice have we got? Um, uh, over here, quick! You look around and see a human-sized, somewhat insect-shaped creature beckoning you into one of the small buildings. Do we follow the creature in, or do we ignore it and wait for the vehicle to approach? Follow the creature in. <laughs> okay, we'll follow the creature in. I, like Skylar and uh, Gilbs are both celebrating <laughs> that they're coming along. Don't be so happy. You might come along and immediately die. I mean, yeah, you guys could just die. <laughs> <laughs> No, like, <laughs> it's, it's not outside the realm of possibility. Okay, Hans says trust and follow in. So does Patrick. Hug the bug. Anyone? Anyone saying no? Anyone want to find out what this this vehicle is? Surely they can only be good people. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> follow the creature. <laughs> and do you know what this reminds me of slightly? Um, it's in my head at the moment. Have you seen a movie called Frequently Asked Questions about time and space? No, sounds like it's, I'd like it though. <laughs> well, I don't. It's interesting, right? So this is. I'm surprised that people haven't seen this movie. It's a BBC HBO co-production, um, and it's basically someone tried to make Shaun of the Dead again, but it's with sci-fi instead of zombies. Okay. Um, and it's got uh, Roy from the IT crowd. I've forgotten his name at this moment. Chris O'Dowd. Yes. In it. Um. A, the other two guys, I can't remember their names, but both sort of like British kind of mainstays. It's made in 2009. And yeah, it is all set within a pub and they find a, a leak in time, a bit like that episode of Red Dwarf, in yeah. the, the gents' toilets. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, it's so like you can watch it straight away. It's on, it's on iPlayer, on BBC iPlayer. Oh, cool. If you're not in the UK, maybe one of them VPNs can get you to watch it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch that. Yeah, yeah. Go check it out. It's not quite feature length. It's like an hour and 16 minutes. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of fun. That's ideal. <laughs> Sounds like the best thing ever. Okay, we're following this bug in. Yep. This might be the last thing we do on today's stream. You yeah. run off the road and follow him into the building. Just in time, he exclaims. You don't want the PCs to find you in the street, do you? You have no idea. Oh, sorry. You have no idea what he is talking about. You explain you are not from this planet. He is on his guard. You reassure him that you mean no harm. You just want some information which may help you get home. And he calms down. You're on the planet Cule Matter, he informs you. The PCs you have just escaped from are the population controllers. On this planet, no one dies. But as the population increases, it is necessary to exterminate some of us to make room for the others. The PCs have the authority to exterminate anyone they like within certain quota limits without reason. They would certainly have killed you had they caught you outside after curfew hours. Suddenly, the door crashes open and three creatures in armored uniforms step in. I thought I saw the men in this building, their leader declares. Outside, he orders. Your host protests that you were aliens and did not know about the curfew laws, but the PC leader points a finger 
and an electric blue ray burns through his chest. You decide it would be prudent to obey the PC's orders. Follow the PCs outside. We don't even get a fight. You explain that you are from another planet and therefore know nothing of their curfew laws. It is illegal to be outside after curfews, says their leader. The penalty is extermination. Enter this vehicle. What now, Captain? Do we obey the aliens and enter the vehicle? Do we draw our phases and fire? Do we pretend to comply and then take them by surprise? Oh, I like that one. Yeah. Like that one. Yeah, th that one seems interesting. What? Skylar, are you fucking kidding? <laughs> Skylar, just uh, accept your fate, just get in there. Yeah, yeah. It's a very Picard thing to do. Be like, no, we must obey their laws and we must understand their customs. I don't think Picard would, having been told like the penalty is death, I don't think the card would get in that truck, I'll be honest. <laughs> Probably not. I, I, mean, well, I don't know. Wouldn't be there, so. I feel like the episode would be like, you know, like, number one, get me a lawyer. And I'm like, the whole thing is then, you know, like, then Riker has to become his lawyer. And he, like, yeah, yeah. backwards sits on a chair in front of the judge. So let's see. Uh, surprise says Gilbert, so does Han, so does Patrick. Only uh, Nate is saying straight away to open fire. Let's go and surprise them. So, you walk up to the entrance as if to climb into the vehicle. As you pass by the aliens, you signal to the others, and the three of you spring on them. This proves to be a rather fruitless exercise. As the three creatures are immensely strong, they fling you to the ground, but as you fall, you manage to grab the helmet off one of the aliens. It stops dead in its tracks in a very artificial pose, as if some switch had suddenly turned it off. The leader grabs the helmet and replaces it on his colleagues, who is instantly spring back to life. You realise you will be no match for the creatures. Climb into their vehicle as they have ordered. Oh, okay. Hmm. So, huh. Cheers. I think this is it. This, this is the cliffhanger we're going to have to leave on. <laughs> this, this, Great, this, guys. Yeah, yeah. We have been, let me uh, save that, get a bookmark in there. So we have been arrested and perhaps being taken to be uh, executed. But I feel like there must be a way out of this. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm confident there's a way out of this. Maybe only some of us will die. Maybe it'll just be Skylar. Mm. So, guys, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> it's fine. It's only Skylar. It's fine. <laughs> Thank you very much, as always, everyone, for joining us. But um, as I mentioned before, please uh, drop a like on the video if you haven't already. Um, subscribe. I think you all have. Don't you worry. Uh, yeah, share it with anyone you think might enjoy this. Otherwise, we will be back with Choose Your Own Adventure Bros next week. And there's going to be plenty more stuff happening on the channel. Gilbert will be streaming some video games. I will hopefully be streaming some video games as well. I want to try and finish off Resident Evil 4. Um, nice. And then we will be back with an audio book next week as well. I should I should check out your your playing Resident Evil Four. I'm sorry I haven't. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, you know, it's just me trying to remember Resident Evil Four. Yeah. Nice. But Rue joins every now and then. It's quite nice. It's good to yeah. hang out with everyone. So, guys, take care. So, Nate, John, Hans, Skylar, Patrick, Gilbert, of course. Uh, do, 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 who have I missed? I feel like I've missed some people. Rue, who has been in the chat and voted every now and then. Thank you, everyone, so much for coming and playing with us today. We will see you soon. Just remember that we are all fulcrum. <laughs>